So nice to meet you in the flesh. I, I I've know. spoken to you on the phone before. Yep. You were very nice. Did a couple bits on the old show. Yep. But so nice to meet you. I'm a longtime you too. fan. And and I as well. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so Murphy Brown uh, went off the air 20 years ago. Um, it was an enormous cultural um, uh, artifact of its time. Like it was an important show because it was groundbreaking in its mixture of uh, politics and topical news of the day and a, and a weekly sitcom. What in today's politics could you possibly find to talk about? <laughs> It's a desert. What can I say? We 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 wouldn't have come back if the election had gone differently. So it's really the only thing that I owe the president is. Oh. Okay. He might call that in. He might call in a favor. <laughs> I'm just we're hoping he will. How has the television landscape changed in the last 20 years? You think? Well, Murphy Brown, there was no social media, and oh, of course. Um, and people still had respect for the press. They weren't the enemy of the people. Mm -hmm. So that's a big change. And, and um, so we're kind of trying to restore the respect for the press for certain parts of the press. Sure. Sure. Now, this is a, the, the, the new show is a morning show. Right? Yes, M Murphy and her colleagues. It's the same core cast from 30 to years ago. We went off the air 20 years ago. And we've added some three new cast members uh, who are... One of them is Tyne Daly and um, Jake McDormand and Nick Dodani. And, and they just fit right in immediately. Now, your, your, uh, Murphy gets into a Twitter war in the very first episode with the President of the United States. That's right, yes. <laughs> Which, we we uh, wasted no time. <laughs> no, 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 because it's, it's actually the most plausible storyline I can think of. Yeah. So, well, um, uh, your character, Murphy, also in the story has gone on a date with Donald Trump. But that's actually a story from your own life, I understand. D did you go on a date? <laughs> Candace Bergen with Donald Trump. I, and I remind you, you're, you're under oath. I was very young. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was about 18, and we're, Trump and I are about the same age, or as he would point out, I'm about six months older. And, um, and it was when I was at, at Penn, and, and I remembered that it was... I might have invented this because it's so perfect, but I think he was wearing a burgundy suit with a burgundy vest and burgundy patent leather boots and was in a burgundy limousine. And so it was kind of a symphony in burgundy. And I, I it was... It looked like a big bruise. Yes. <laughs> I was home very early. <laughs> How did it come about? Don't leave out any details. I, so, <laughs> so he was at Penn too, right? Did no, you he, was to... not a, he was not a student at Penn yet. Okay, so how did you meet him? How how does how does a Candace Bergen meet a you know, Donald Trump? He he was not Donald Trump then. He was Donald Trump, but he was just kind of you know a, a guy. Did you meet him at a party? I mean, am I? I think he must have called me. I don't remember really. Uh, you don't? Okay, he'd be so insulted to hear that. <laughs> well, uh, you've also been on a date with Henry Kissinger, oh, right? Oh God, it's like. The world's great conservatives. I, no, I, I did. How did that come about? That came about because uh, friends of my parents had a very small dinner for Frank Sinatra and his date, and Henry Kissinger, and I was his date because they were friends of my parents. And he was late picking me up because the Secret Service couldn't find Beverly Hills. And. Um, <laughs> And, but, but Kissinger, you know, was, of course, highly intelligent, very charming, and, and it was, the dinner was just sort of like a mano a mano between Kissinger and Sinatra, and it's like, no, I'm the most popular, no, no, but I'm Frank. And, mm -hmm. and that's what it was, and then I was home. Who was the better date, uh, Trump or Kissinger? A Kissinger. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, our network, CBS, uh, knows how to advertise things, and your <laughs> name, you you oh. you uh, Instagrammed or tweeted this thing out. You said, "Okay, so I'm on the front of five thousand of these suckers, and friends are complaining that I almost hit them." 
Your face is the last thing a lot of tourists will see. <laughs> in New York. It's, it's overwhelming. Are they really complaining? I, I've gotten several emails from people, and my daughter gets them from people. And one of the buses was stopping in front of our apartment building the other day, and I asked my driver, Paulie. I said, Paul, stop. I want to I wanna take a picture of the bus. And so I jumped in front of the bus, and, and <laughs> as much as someone my age can jump. And, um, and so I said to the driver, that's me on the bus. And she goes, so? <laughs> and, and then the light changed, and she said, get out of the way. <laughs> That's what I like about New York. That's right. They so much care. respect. <laughs> well, you must have a certain, uh, at an early age, come up with a blasé attitude toward famous faces, because for those of you, who, a few people out there who may not know, uh, your father was Edgar Bergen. Her father was Edgar Bergen, who was the most famous ventriloquist in the world and a comedian in his own right. He was also the only ventriloquist in the world, but uh, I mean, it's, it's not a growing profession. But he performed. <laughs> he performed here in, in the Ed Sullivan, right? Yeah, Back in he the did. Day. He did. And um, you uh, had a childhood filled with famous people. Um, this is you <laughs> as a little girl uh, with uh, one of your father's dummies. <laughs> That's uh, Charlie McCarthy. That's correct, in yes. In the background right there. So at, w at what point did you realize um, you had an unusual childhood? Actually, the older I get, the more I'm overcome with a kind of nostalgia for it. I, probably nine or ten. Was... What was it, what was that sort of triggered it for you? And like, huh, this is, not every kid has this. Well, frankly, it, it, as I got older and older, people would say, you mean Fred Astaire came to your house and danced with the guests? And I said, well, he was a guest at the party. And Rex Harrison was in town filming My Fair Lady, and, and he came to the house for a party. And, and I understand Walt Disney was also a guest. Walt Disney was a, a, a very good friend of the family and was a lovely man. And, um, and he had a, a train in his backyard. Well, it was like eight acres, so it was more than a yard. And it was... Um, it was like a train this high, and you would sit on it, and it w was on real tracks all over around his garden and a trestle bridge, and you would shovel coal into the little engine, and um, adults went nuts over this train. I kind of want your childhood <laughs> now. It was good. It was well, really good. Man, it's lovely to meet you. Thank you, you so much for being here. Murphy Brown returns tomorrow at 9.30 on CBS. Candace Burton, everybody. We'll be right back with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern.